Hey guys, uh, my name is Brian and I'm going to be doing an intro to programming series. Uh, this is for absolute beginners who are just now getting into programming. We're going to be using the language Java, uh, which I think is a pretty good choice, pretty simple, pretty straightforward stuff. And the goal of this series is to just get people that have absolutely no experience programming to the point where my next series that I'll also be working on concurrently, game programming, picks up. So really this series is just to prepare people for the other series after that. But also, if you don't have interest in game programming, it's still a good idea. Uh, we're just going to cover the basics of programming. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. So we're going to start off by finding the actual program that we're going to use to write our code. And there's many options, but we're going to use Eclipse, which you can find super easily. Just Google it. And you can go to the website. I'm just going to put downloads here. And you can use whatever program you want. Um, I'm using this one, so it might be easiest for you to follow along with the same one. Uh, so we're going to get this one right here. Uh, downloaded one million times as of this tutorial. Uh, the IDE for Java EE developers. It's 246 megs. And you're just going to click on the 32-bit or 64-bit, whichever one's yours. Uh, if you don't know what bit your operating system is, you can click Start and right-click on your computer and go to Properties. And it should say right here under System Type. So I have 64-bit. And so I'll get the 64-bit. I already have it downloaded, but just download it. I'm not going to cover how to install it because you guys aren't dumb. Next, 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 finish, open. And you should get this. So this is the inside of Eclipse. And uh, we'll cover what these things do as we get to them. Uh, not very complicated stuff. Uh, we're going to start off and go to File up here, and go to New, and we're going to make a new project. And then we're going to choose a Java project, so click Next after you click that. And for the project name, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name mine Tutorial 1. And we're going to click Finish at the end. Don't need to mess with the other things. doesn't matter. No, I don't want to open this perspective. I like my perspective. And so in the top left, you'll see our Tutorial 1 folder that was just created in the Project Explorer. And then we have a couple folders here, the Java System Library, which we're not going to worry about, and the SRC folder. And so the SRC folder stands for Source, and that's where everything we do is going to go in. So we're going to right-click the SRC folder, and we're going to go to New, Class. Sorry if I'm going kind of fast in the beginning here, but I think most people shouldn't have a problem keeping up here. If you do, just pause and... Uh, you know, follow along as best as you can. It's just setting up the program. So in this new class, we're going to name it, uh, I'm going to name mine main. The use of default package discourage. Don't worry about that for now. You can name a package if you want. Uh, there's specific conventions online. Uh, you're supposed to, your domain name and then the project name. I'm just going to leave a default. So I'm just going to name the class right here, main, and then click finish. And so here we see at the top left, we have the source folder, we have the default package, and then we have the main.java, the main class that we just made. And you can you know, click these little arrows and hide it. And packages really are used to kind of organize your stuff. You're supposed to put everything in one package for, at least for what we're doing, we're going to keep everything in the same package. So you don't really need to worry about it too much. And then inside here is where our actual code goes. And everything we write is going to be in this window. Um, you can resize these windows, I'm pretty sure, and move them around. So, you know, get yourself comfortable. Everything we write is going to be in here. And they already started us off with public class main. And so everything in this main.java uh, file is going to be within these two uh, brackets here. Anything we write outside isn't going to count. And we're not going to write anything outside because you're not supposed to. So don't do that. All right. And so I'm going to write a line right now that is going to be kind of confusing but just copy it for now and don't worry about it. Public static void main. And then we have the parentheses string args and brackets at the end. So just copy that down. Pause the video if you have to. And write this down exactly as it is right here. And what this is, this is the little... So in programming, everything happens within brackets. So everything in this entire main.java file will go in between these two opening and closing brackets. You can tell when you click near the top one, the, the bottom one highlights because they're a pair. And then this new method that we made, this, this like kind of program inside of a program, has its own brackets. 
And so everything that this do, <laughs> everything that this does is going to go in between these two brackets right here. Okay? So we're going to click enter here a couple times. I don't know why I asked. Okay, you guys better be okay with it. I can't hear you. And so now we're inside this main method that we just wrote. Um, and so these, these purple words that I said not to worry about, uh, we'll cover them later. But pretty much all you need to know is that they they give this little class right here, this whole area, certain characteristics. So public uh, allows this method to be seen by other classes. If we're like right now we're in main.java, if we were to make a secondary.java, then public would allow this to be seen by that secondary. Uh, the other alternative is private, but we're we're going to keep it public for right now. Um, and I'll cover static and void later. And then main is the name of our class. Okay. Our method. Sorry. The name of our class is main with a capital M. The name of our method is lowercase m. All right. And so now the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to print something out to the console. And so this this window down here is what the the end user experience is going to be for our little program. It's what people are going to see when they run it. Okay. So we're going to write system dot or period out dot print l n and then we're going to put parentheses and a semicolon at the end and so the thing with java and most programming languages is that every line has to end with either a bracket like we have here which denotes that you're opening a new uh, either a method or a new class and that's brackets or a semicolon which denotes the end of the line so if you don't have the semicolon here it'll give you an error or it won't run when you save it see so you put a semicolon there, and that denotes that that line's finished. So we're going to click Save All up here. Um, I realize now I might be talking kind of fast. This is my first tutorial, so uh, if that's the case, then uh, I'll just have to go slower next time. But I apologize for <laughs> if it's too fast. Um, so then we're going to click Run, which is this little green play button up here. And nothing happens. Perfect, it works. So you can see terminated here. It means that the computer went through the entire program and nothing went wrong because we really have nothing in here. And it got to the end, and then once it gets to the end, it just ends the program, so terminated. And so what we want to do is we have this command here, this command to print a line to the console, right? But we have nothing in it. So this command will run anything that's between these two parentheses here. And so you kind of take it apart like a uh, system. Pretty much we're telling the system that you can have either system.in or system.out, depending if it's going to be receiving data or spitting out data. And so in this case, the, the program is spitting out data to the console. And what does it want to do with that data? It wants to print it to a line. Okay? So what we're going to write is we're going to put in quotation marks. You have to put it in quotes. We're going to say, hello world. I'm going to save and run. And here you go. Hello world. Uh, terminated once it got to the end. And every string needs to be um, within quotation marks. So a, a string is pretty much just what we said. A string is a sentence or a word. Um, it's, a string stands for like a string of characters. Uh, though It could just be one character. But basically every string needs to be within quotation marks. So if you didn't have the quotation marks here, you see you get an error from deleting one of them, and if you delete the other one, it's an error. You need to have it in quotation marks, otherwise it won't work. Um, you could say whatever you want, though. It doesn't need to be hello world, obviously. You could say, you know, hello tool porch, and it still works. Um, let's see. I don't know if I should keep going in this one. Yeah, we'll do a main, we'll do a, a basic variable. So variables are the other most important part of programming, the very backbone. And so we're going to write public up above the main method, outside of the main method. We're going to write public static string instead of void. And we're going to name it a string. Okay? So public static string a string. I'm just going to save it. You don't need to save it right now. And then so pretty much what we're telling the computer is we want to we want to set aside a little part of data or a little compartment for something called a string. And now what we can do 
So we can delete everything in these quotes. Goodbye, Google Forge. And instead, without quotes, we can type in a string. And capitalization matters needs to be exactly the name of the variable above. Save and run should be null. Null. Null meaning nothing, meaning that a string has no value, and so it just prints null. So above where we print out, we're just going to type a string equals, and then in quotes we'll say, hello, actually I'm going to say, I am a string, and then end it with a semicolon. And now let's save and run. I am a string. And so that's really the beauty of variables that you don't need to type out I am a string over and over. If you just type a string, it the computer will then go, all right, a string, they want to print that out, so let's go and find where it is. A string, here it is. And what's it equal to? It equals I am a string. And it prints out exactly whatever a string is equal to. Um, something else you can do is you can, this is called declaring the variable at the top. So you declare it the first time that you make up the name for the variable, in this case, a string. So we declared it with public static string, a string. And we set it. You set it when you equal it to something or you, when you give it a value. And we said a string equals I am a string. And so you can also reset variables instead of uh, making a new one every time. You can say a string equals, no, seriously, I am a string. And then what we'll do is we'll print it out again. So I'm going to copy this line right here and paste it. Oop, you need to put a semicolon there. So paste it. And now let's save it and run it. I am a string. No, seriously, I am a string. And so even though both times we're saying to print a string, which is the same thing, it gets changed. The value changes. And since the computer goes from top to bottom, you can see at this point, it's equal to I'm a string, and then we change it. At this point, it's equal to, no, seriously, I'm a string. All right, guys. So thanks for listening. Um, hopefully this is good enough to release. Otherwise, you'll never see it. And, uh, yeah, I guess hopefully I'll have some more out soon. Uh, let me know in the comments if this was an awful experience for you or, you know, not bad. And I'll try to get more out for you guys. Thanks.